Alrighty, so you guys are uh, probably a little surprised to see me holding a little raccoon, right? Because I hunt these guys. But, you know, you'd also be surprised to know I've had pet rats, all kinds of things that I've hunted. <laughs> so, um, raccoons are pretty cool little animals. They've actually been one of my favorite animals all growing up. They're very, very intelligent, very, very inquisitive. And uh, one thing that people love is their little hands. They have, their paws are almost like a hand, minus the thumb. They don't have a opposable thumb, but very, very hand-like. And their paws are probably just as sensitive, if not more sensitive than humans. I've never heard any studies about it, but I would assume they probably have extra sensitive uh, hands more so than humans because they utilize them for, for capturing prey. If you look at these little hands, that's how they, uh, when they catch crayfish and minnows and stuff, they don't dive in head first like a mink, but those little hands are what allow them to capture underwater prey like mussels and crayfish and fish, which is such a strange way, you know, if you think about most animals, but that's how they do it. They just feel around. And what's interesting is they don't watch where they're feeling. Like you and I, if we were trying to catch crayfish, we'd watch. They actually will look around for danger and other things, just look off into the distance. <laughs> rather than uh, looking at where they feel. Um, raccoons are where we're from, back where we're from in Utah, they're not native. So most other states, you know, they're, they're a native animal. Um, but back where we're from in Utah, these things are a non-native pest and they cause a lot of problems. So uh, people couldn't have one like this just as a pet uh, where we're from. Um, What's interesting is they, uh, though they're very cute and very intelligent, they are extremely aggressive animals. Um, very, very, very dangerous to, uh, to try and handle one. So one of the things that, that they have in addition to a, a bad, bad, bad attitude is they also have a lot of diseases and parasites. Now this little guy, uh, because he's a pet, they've been doing everything they can to you know, getting vaccinated and, and reduce the parasite load through constant worming. But they actually have a very dangerous parasite called the raccoon roundworm. So these little guys, as, as cute and smart as they are, they, they absolutely make horrible pets the vast majority of the time. So if you are someone who lives in a state um, where it's legal to keep them as pets or you can get a license to keep them, um, you got to realize that these things are extremely high maintenance and very, very complicated to keep. In addition to the fact that you may end up with an individual just that just refuses to be even remotely a uh, reasonable pet. They're very, very, very aggressive, um, just like a mink, and they love to get into things. So you're not going to be able to keep one just roaming around the house like a cat or a dog. Um, under the vast majority of circumstances, unsupervised, they're going to destroy things, absolutely destroy your home within a short period of time. So they need specialized housing. They're very active, so it needs to be big housing, and it needs to be raccoon proof. And then you need to be able to put in the time and effort to properly care for one and make sure you, you're properly licensed or live in a state where maybe it doesn't require a license. Um, you got to keep up on their vaccines and their worming because, like I said, they carry a lot of horrible diseases and parasites that you have to be careful about. Very, very complicated pets. Um, don't think that you can just go get one out of the woods and it'll be cool. Um, they can be very dangerous, both, both like I said, because of their parasites, diseases, and bad attitudes. So not a pet for, uh, for the average person. And then, like I said, you run the bad luck of, even if you do everything right, you might just end up with a horrible individual with a horrible attitude. So not recommended. That, uh, that a normal person go out and attempt this. Um, I talk like I know a lot about them. I really don't have much experience. Um, I have kept a few kind of for brief periods when I was younger, um, but I was absolutely obsessed with raccoons all growing up, so I've studied them and their care extensively. Actual hands-on experience is pretty limited, so I guess everything I say probably take with a grain of salt, right? <laughs> but, um, yeah, very interesting animals. In pretty much everywhere they live, they, they um, have the very high likelihood of getting out of control as far as populations. So their natural predators are very few and far between that are left. So normally things like mountain lions and wolves would, would uh, prey on them. 
They're, they're a pretty big handful for coyotes unless they capture them while young like this. A coyote or a fox could easily crunch this little guy. But within a few months, he's going to put up enough of a fight that foxes will discontinue their attempt. And a few months after that, they're pretty safe from coyotes too. Um, in fact, there is a lot of footage out there showing these guys beating up and picking on coyotes who try and come to a feeder where they're, they're feeding on the same food. Very interesting little creatures. Like I said, not, not something that the, over, that the majority of people want to mess with, um, but super interesting nonetheless. It's a shame that in our state they are completely illegal because, um, because of their non-native um, uh, status, uh, because they're a, a non-native pest. They are completely illegal to keep as pets. They would be kind of cool if I could have one. I definitely would, I'll tell you that. I think they're super interesting animals and it would be fun to, to, to try and raise one, but yeah, in our state it's not legal, so we have to go out of state to legally enjoy a little someone else's pet, right? But um, yeah, pretty fun little guy. Let's, uh, they've got another interesting pet here that I wanna show you guys. Something I used to catch, another thing, I used to catch these as kids all the time too, but something else I used to catch as a kid. So let's go show you the next interesting pet these guys have. Look at that snapping turtle. Stay back, stay back, sir. He will bite you. Look from a distance. Come look, Eddie. So make sure you stay back. Look at that snapping turtle. Oh my goodness, he's so big. So daddy catch it? Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay, stay back. Stand back, please. Get hurt. You don't get want to hurt. get hurt. And daddy doesn't want to get hurt either. He's ready to eat someone. Woo. Woo. Okay. Woo <laughs> These guys have long old necks. So this is what I used to catch all the time as a kid, is common snapping turtles. And these guys are a lot more dangerous than the more famous alligator snapping turtle. Um, their bite is nowhere near as bad, to be honest. They've got a lot smaller heads. Their bills don't have near the vicious hook or sharp edge as an alligator snapping turtle. However, they're 10 times more likely to bite you. For one, they have way more attitude, way, 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 way more aggressive than an alligator snapping turtle. Even if, and even if they had the identical aggression, look at that neck. Let's see if we can get him to really show his neck off here. Look at that neck. It's like a long old snake neck. Let's see if we can get him to stretch his neck out a little bit. See how long that is? That sucker will reach out like a snake striking. That sucker will reach out like a snake striking and hit you. Bam! And they love to bite. Look at that. They are not bluff. So alligator snapping turtles are mostly bluff. And if you make it easy for them, they'll bite you. This guy, he's going to find a way to bite you. <laughs> Any way possible. And uh, they're a lot of fun to catch. When I was a little kid, I used to catch these all the time. This is a reasonably sized one. Not very big. But he definitely could be smaller, you know? He's not tiny. But we've caught ones easily double or triple the size of this guy. And uh, the ones we caught weren't even close to record size. I never caught anything that was huge, huge. But uh, look at that. He wants to get me so bad. You gonna get me, huh? <laughs> yeah, I used to love catching these guys as a little kid. So put it back. Look at that, he's still snapping. Put him back and he's still trying to bite at stuff. When I was young, I actually raised an alligator snapping turtle from a teeny little hatchling all the way up until he was probably twice, maybe probably about three times the size of him. And uh, that was a really fun experience. But then he just got so big when I got, I eventually had to um, send him back to a breeder. Um, now the alligator snapping turtle, unlike the common snapping turtle, is actually struggling to survive in the wild. Um, they've been over harvested and they grow much slower than common snapping turtles and they have a much more restricted range. So the alligator snap snapping turtle is actually struggling to survive whereas the common snapping turtle is everywhere. I, you, I don't think you could get rid of them if you wanted to. So the alligator snapping turtle, the one that I had, his name was Nemo and I sent Nemo to a breeder farm in Missouri where they're trying to 
uh, basically reintroduce the species into the wild and help to repopulate areas that have been uh, over harvested of the alligator snapping turtle. And that's really what come down to, to the reason that there aren't as many alligator snapping turtles is they're being harvested for food. And because they grow so slowly, the over harvest began to harm their population. So unlike other animals like deer or like common snapping turtles, for example, they could quickly and easily bounce back if a little short period of over harvest happened. Alligator snapping turtles take so long to grow and get to adult ma uh, mature size to be able to breed that over harvesting can affect them for a long time and it takes a really long time for them to bounce back. So anyway, so he's now in a breeding program helping to uh, reintroduce his species into the wild. So it's kind of a cool experience raising him. All right, so we had a fun little trip out here, checking out the little pet raccoon and the snake and all that fun stuff. And turtles. And the turtle. Did you like the snapping turtle? Yeah. That was pretty cool, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, it's pretty it, big. It's we really, have one too. We have one too. Yeah, we have a small one. You're right. We have a small turtle, huh? We don't have a big one like that. No, we just have a tiny. Tiny one. Yeah, back in Utah, that's actually another thing that's illegal. In Utah, back in Utah, uh, you cannot have snapping turtles because they are an invasive species for us. We do not have like stable populations. I've actually never seen a, a snapping turtle in Utah, but um, I've heard stories that they've been discovered a couple times. So they're apparently starting to uh, move into our state. So hopefully they'll stay away. I'm kind of worried about how they'll react with the mink, but. But anyway, so it's kind of fun seeing some things that we don't normally get to see, huh, Olive? Yeah. Did you have fun? What did you like the most? Um, snakes. You like the snakes? And the frogs. And the frogs? You did. And the monitors. And the monitor, but that's not a monitor. What is it? Uh, Iguana. Iguana. Yeah. I like it. You like it? What did you think of the raccoon? Uh, it looks pretty. It looks pretty, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Alrighty, well thanks for watching guys. We'll show you more next time. Bye YouTube! Bye! <laughs>